Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and sometimes we need a quick and easy table runner to set on our table. It could be to add color into the room or it could be for a special occasion. For example, New Year's Eve. And I have a really fun project that's going to take 14 5 inch squares. So if we have some charm packs we can use those. And the background fabric comes up and around to the front and that piece of fabric will need to be 18 and a half inches by 44 inches. The first thing we need to do is sew those charms together in sets of two. So we're going to have this one long runner. From there, we're going to be able to put it onto the background fabric. Now, if we want to add quilt batting, we're going to be able to add that at the end. But let's get the table runner made first, and then you can decide if you want to add the batting. Once that long strip is put together, we need to find the center. The easiest way is just fold it in half and finger press. This background fabric wraps around to the front. So we're going to have a border all the way around. But we do need to find the center of this long strip. So I've done the same thing. I fold it in half and press that fold. So I'm going to have two half lines. We need to match right sides together and take that quilt top and move it to the edge so the center marks are matching up. Our background fabric is going to be a lot bigger. So we're just going to start here and stitch down a quarter inch and stop right when we come to this edge. So match up those center marks and do that one row of stitching. With that one edge stitched on, we can take this and press it so it's going towards that solid fabric. Lay the pieces back down so they're right sides together. Take that top piece and just bring it over to that center line. We do want those center folds to match. Pin and stitch. When we're finished, we're going to do the same thing as we did this edge. The seams are going to be pressed to the dark or that background fabric. When that edge is pressed and done, we are going to have a tube with two long ends sticking out of them. Take the table runner, pick it up from that center seam and fold it in half. Match up your edges and match up this cut edge. Match that edge and stitch a quarter inch just along this edge. And we're going to need to do that to both edges. So we're going to have a seam on the one side and just the seam here on the other side. This L seam has not been stitched, so it is open. When we go to open this up, that center seam is going to create a point. Take those seams and press them flat. On this very end, just snip off a little triangle right to that edge of the stitching line. And that's going to allow us to press that seam open and it's going to make that point nice and pointy. And do that to both sides. Once that fabric has been pressed down flat, we're going to be able to find the center. Do not press the folds, just that seam. This seam line is going to match up to the center line. So we're just going to be able to maneuver that fabric so that center line matches up. And we're not doing any pressing right now. Just put a couple of pins to hold it into the right shape. Do that for that edge and do the same for this edge. So this is what the finished shape is going to be and the finished size. We are going to have equal amounts on both sides and those seams are running right down the center. Place a couple of pins just to hold it into shape because we're not going to be pressing this, but we're going to use this as a template to get the batting size. So to get that size, we're going to put this fabric right on top of our batting, and then we're going to use this table runner as a guide to get the shape. Now, as much as we might be tempted to cut that out now, it is better if we trace it. So make sure that that batting is flat, and trace out this shape. I've used just a regular marker 
to mark that. Now we can remove this and to cut this batting out we need to cut it a little bit past those drawn lines and I will use a ruler. This batting is a little bit big because we drew on the outside so I want to cut to the inside and I do want straight lines so I'm just going to cut that entire shape out coming to the inside of those lines. Now that that batting is cut out we're going to take this table runner turn it so we see that back side and it should fit and we should have just a little bit peeking out all the way around. If we don't have a little bit peeking out we can re-trim this down. We now need to attach this batting onto that back of the fabric. My favorite way is spray basting. But if you can't spray baste, you can remove those pins from the front. And just put your hand inside and pin that batting onto the layers. Because we want it just pinned onto this back piece. Now, if you do not have batting or you don't want to add batting, that's fine too. So turn that over, remove the pins, and with that batting stuck onto the back, pull this front point over. I'm just going to put a pin in there to hold it. Roll this side over, just put a pin to hold it. Now turn this right side out. If you did do some pin basting, you're going to have to get your hands in and remove those pins. And that's why I prefer to do some type of a spray adhesive. Now I can remove that pin from those points. That batting is now inside and it helps keep that edge straight for us. We're going to be able to put our hand inside, poke out that little point, and then we're going to have this loose end. It's just fold this so you have a straight edge. That batting is already keeping that straight for us. That seam will need to line up. We just need to make sure everything's flat inside. So when we smooth it out, we're going to have that center seam line up to the center seam. And do that to both edges. Smooth all of those layers together. Make sure everything's tucked in and pin based. Once this is all pin based, we can quilt it. If you have not added batting, the only thing you need to do is stitch in the ditch right along this edge and along this area so that you don't have this flap. Even with the batting, we will need to close up this gap so we can do a row of stitching on each end and then just do a free motion quilting design. So I will be stitching this edge down and then I'm going to figure out a free motion pattern. So I did a very simple free motion quilting along the entire table runner. I also did a quarter inch seam allowance to put a nice edge on it. So it looks nice from the front and it also looks nice from the back. And there was absolutely no hand sewing done at all and no binding. So the table runner from point to point is 42 inches and that width is about 13 and a half inches. This only took 14 5 inch squares and a piece of fabric 18 and a half inches by 44 and a half inches. We have these great little points, no hand sewing and that batting went inside and when it was quilted no one will know how quick and easy it did take us. I do hope you've enjoyed today's episode and thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're working on next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.